Okay, in this video I would like to go over the triggers, why they're important how, and how to use them. So if we look at the diagrams for the functions, uh, some of the functions uh, have their diagrams without the trigger and the diagrams with the trigger. And some of the functions, so let's say function 12, 13 have the tr trigger. They, do they don't have the diagram without the trigger because the, for that function to work we need to use the trigger. So for the on delay, so what is a trigger? Trigger is just an input signal from some other source that tells the timer to start or end a specific cycle. So if we configure the timer to the function number one without a trigger, uh, as soon as we supply the power, the output comes on and stays on for a period of time, and then it shuts off until you recycle the power and it starts over again. But let's say you want to supply the power to the timer, but you don't want the output to come on instantly. You want to wait until the outside signal, maybe your switch or some ignition signal, some other signal, uh, tells the uh, timer to start the countdown. So in this case, uh, you would configure the timer to the trigger, to use the trigger. And when you supply the power, nothing happens. When the trigger comes on, it starts the timing. It supplies the output and then shuts off, and then you have to recycle the power. And there's various diagrams you can see, some with the trigger, some without. If we look at the function number 12, this is off delay, so it uh, delays the shining uh, off the power. Uh, as we had the example before, you can use it for automotive uh, purpose when you want to sub when you want to power something when. Ignition comes on, you want to power your device, let's say a GPS unit, uh, but when you shut the ignition off, you want for that unit to stay on, for example, for example, an hour. So that's what this is for. You would configure the uh, timer to option function number 12 and the trigger uh, to use a trigger. Uh, so when you supply the power, nothing happens. When the trigger comes on, your ignition comes on the output turns on and stays on. When the ignition turns off, the countdown starts. And if it counts to the speed, to the your set interval, let's say one hour, it turns off. If you supply uh, if you supply the trigger like in this next diagram, if you if your ignition comes on and comes uh, uh, turns off, it starts the timing, but if before the timer expires time expires if you supply if ignition turns on again then it resets the timing and uh, it's gonna again wait until that uh, uh, trigger uh, that ignition uh, turns off again so hopefully uh, I explained it to you why do you need to use the trigger and the next uh, segment we're gonna use uh, how to configure it and how to use it so we already looked how the trigger works. The trigger in this case goes from low to high and it turns the output on and starts the countdown when the trigger drops to low. But uh, let's say you want to trigger something when your ignition turns off versus ignition on. So in this case you can change the trigger uh, from being active when it goes from high to low. So in this case it goes from low to high, but you can change it to say and uh, the trigger would be uh, logically active when it goes from high to low. When ignition is off, you can uh, tr you can trigger the event. I'm, and uh, we're gonna show you how. So if you look at the manual, there's uh, really two pages that uh, explain the trigger process. Uh, one is a table that shows you different uh, trigger configurations. Uh, the first column, it shows you what the trigger pull is, and it's low or high. And then the second one, it shows what the active trigger is and the brief uh, description when to use this particular trigger. So what we use in, in our prior examples is the trigger number two and the trigger pulls to the low and the active trigger is the high. So that's what important is the trigger, active trigger is the high. And this is an example here in the diagram is uh, when the trigger is uh, um, high, it goes to uh, goes to from low to high. It starts the countdown. Uh, you can change the trigger to the four, 
and uh, and that would be the opposite that uh, would be the active uh, trigger would be the low signal so in case with the ignition when you in a uh, high state that's trigger disabled or not active and when it drops to low it uh, makes the trigger active and you can set the different functions uh, uh, to start the countdown and so forth uh, so what the trigger pull is uh, so trigger is just a wire right so trigger is just a wire that goes into the timer it's a, it's the uh, it's the blue wire and uh, in this case we want to trigger something on a positive trigger right so we want to let's say when we connect the button or the switch to the power we want to trigger something so in this case the active signal would be high but the wire itself needs to be connected uh, needs to be pulled low it needs to have a low signal when the button is not connected and if the wire is just not connected to anywhere uh, it will get induction from the various electromagnetic uh, sources and it will never have a zero volts there so what we need to do we need to pull the wire to the ground with the with the resistor the resistor resistor is built in into the timer so when you set the trigger to low it's automatically pull this wire to the zero volts it's really a, a low current going through that so if you measure the voltage on the blue wire you'll find it's a zero volts and when you connect it to the power it will be jumped to let's say 12 volts it will jump to 12 volts and that will be make the trigger uh, uh, active now in a uh, situation you can also use the same thing uh, to be to to change the trigger to be active when it drops to low so when you connect the button you want to trigger to be uh, uh, off so let's say you want to trigger something when you disconnect the button or the switch versus uh, uh, connecting it so in this case when the button or switch is connecting the uh, the blue wire to the power the trigger would be off and when you disconnect the button then it trigger become on now if you connect the button or the switch to the ground then we need to pull the uh, that wire to the higher signal so in this case there's a resistor so by changing those functions here by changing to the function to a trigger number four you will uh, pull this uh, trigger to the higher voltage to the five volts internally and then you can use the button to short it to the ground and that will activate the process so if we set it to the uh, to the function uh, to the trigger four where it's pulled to the high pulled to the high voltage when you don't connect the wire to anything and the active trigger would be when you push the button it uh, uh, connected uh, to the ground uh, so in this case if you measure the voltage on that wire without uh, the sw switches or button pushed you'll find it will be five volts so it's internally pulls it to the high signal when you connect it to the ground the voltage drops to zero and uh, drops to zero activates the trigger so that shows here you can also reverse it uh, and uh, make uh, the uh, make the uh, uh, trigger active when you disconnect the button versus when you connecting the button so this is what those uh, four different config uh, configs are you can set the uh, you can set the pull low or uh, both to low and then the active trigger could be high or low and the same thing here the 4.5 the pull is high and the trigger could be either one low or high so let's quickly go over what does the six seven eight and nine functions are so those are the same really functions the trigger is low and active trigger is high but it ensures that the trigger transitions from the inactive states to the active state so let me show you uh, an example so if we have the diagram like this the 12 uh, the of delay uh, when the trigger comes on so this is normally the trigger is off when you supply the uh, 
initial voltage and when uh, the trigger comes on ignition turns on uh, the output comes on but let's say your ignition or your trigger signal is on and you supply the power it immediately it immediately going to start that cycle what if you want to make sure that the trigger is inactive first of all and that's what that uh, those uh, functions are if you want to if you want to do that you would set it to six seven eight and nine and that insurance when you turn ignition when you turn the power on if the trigger is active it the timer is going to wait until first of all that trigger jumps to inactive state and then it's going to wait until it goes to active so it basically ensures that the trigger is in inactive state first and then it's only going to watch it when it goes from inactive to active so if it's active as soon as you supply the power uh, it's not going to do anything it's going to wait for that so there's some situations where you want to use those functions okay so let's uh, look at the trigger in action so we're going to configure the timer to the function number number 12 and the trigger we're going to configure to 2 which is pull to low and active is high so what I have here I have the circuit already connected I'm going to use the optional configuration board those are buttons 1 and 2 that connected to the white and green wires just so it's easy to program during the demonstrations but you can also use the wires to configure the timer so we're going to supply the we're going to push the button supply the power going to the programming mode set the time to a couple seconds I'm going to next mode we're going to configure the function to 12 1 2 3 10, 11, 12, and setting up trigger to 2. And we're done. So we supply the power. Nothing happens. We take the blue wire, connect it to the uh, positive, turns on the output, waits for our set time, and turns off. If we keep connecting the blue wire to the, to the positive, it resets the timer it's only starts the timer when we disconnect the wire so that's the uh, active trigger we set to a, a high we can also change it to the to the function 4 which uh, would be active when we connect the trigger to the ground so let's do that we're going to push two buttons supply the power light comes on release the buttons now the timing I don't want to change uh, so if you don't if you don't want to change the timing you just uh, move to the next step uh, push two buttons go to next step functions we don't need to change it set to 12 the only thing we need to change is the trigger and we're gonna set it to 4 so we're gonna push the button number two four times disconnect the power connect the power if you take the blue wire connect to the uh, positive uh, nothing happens because positive is actually uh, uh, it's, it is not an active trigger the active trigger is the low so we need to take the blue wire and connect it to the ground and uh, connecting to the ground activates our cycle another example of the trigger use is uh, the circuit like this in the manual where we can uh, it's basically a circuit that we can where we use the button to create a self latching timer with ability to turn off so here's a circuit really simple and the button connects to the uh, to the ground we're going to set the function to 16 and trigger to 4 and what will allow us to do is allows us to uh, push the button or connect the blue wire to the ground to turn the light on and then connect it again to turn the lights off so let's do that we're going to supply the power going to the programming mode now the option 16 the uh, function 16 is we're going to take a look what it uh, represents it represents the the following when we supply the power 
uh, nothing happens when they activate the trigger the uh, when we activate the trigger countdown uh, starts if we don't uh, if we do so this is probably better example here uh, if we don't uh, push the button again it expires so if we push the button once uh, in five seconds the light will turn off by itself but we can also uh, push the button and push it again in less than five seconds and it will uh, uh, turn the light off so if you push the button once it expires after a period of time but you can turn the light on and if you want to force it to be off you can push the button one more time the timing we're going to set to five seconds but uh, obviously it could be you know an hour if you if you needed to so we're going to the programming mode uh, supply the power release the buttons we're gonna push the first button for five seconds this will be our time time uh, off release the t2 we don't need to set so we're gonna we're going to the next uh, mode set up the function is 16 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then the trigger set to a 4 and we're going to disconnect the power and connect it back and um, we uh, the trigger needs to be connected to the ground so if we connect to the ground light lights uh, light comes on for five seconds and then it expires after a period of time if we uh, hold the uh, hold the button or hold this wire to the ground the timer still expires if we touch it once it turns the light on if we touch it second time it turns off so this is the function 16 basically you can create a self-latching circuit with the ability to turn off.